AI is rapidly changing the job market and the future belongs to those who stay ahead of the curve. I recently had the opportunity to visit IIM Bangalore to host an AI workshop and also interact with their students. In this video, I'll share some key snippets from that session and also give you some key insights on how you can safeguard your career from AI's impact in the next six months. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Awesome. Uh, I'm audible, right? Cool, cool, cool. Good to see so many of you come on time. I'm so sorry for being late, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth it. So folks, before I go ahead, a quick accessibility check. Is there anyone here who is not comfortable with Hindi? Please raise your hands. Awesome. So I'll make sure that I don't switch to Hindi. The slides are accessible. The audio is accessible. Awesome. Before I move ahead, there's a very interesting quote that I read a few days ago. It said that there are decades where nothing happens and then there are weeks where decades happen. And in the next 45-50 minutes, you realize that this quote is actually coming true. We're living those weeks where things are happening that would have usually taken 50 to 60 years. So it's pretty exciting. The entire masterclass is split into two segments. No fluff, we'll keep it very, very airtight. And each segment is 40 minutes long. Now, there's this tool called Midjourney, as I mentioned, that allows you to create images. And it came back a pretty long time. There's a very interesting history behind it. But in November 2022, version 4 came in. And at that point, assume that I got a contract from the government. And the government comes to me and says, Anch, we want you to design a new e-rickshaw, a prototype for a new e-rickshaw for the Indian streets. Now, this is something that has never been imagined before, right? Back in November 2022, if I were to prompt something as simple as minimal futuristic design for electronic rickshaw for the Indian streets, mid-journey version 4, back then, in just 60 seconds, would make this. Even that time, I was like, okay, this looks kind of fake, not that practical, but pretty impressive. Because this is something that was created by a machine. From scratch, four images in just 60 seconds. But in June 2022, we got version 5.2, which is just around like eight months ago. Not that long. The same prompt on mid-journey version 5.2 would make something like this. Now, you can obviously see the leap at which it improved in just eight months. In just 60 seconds, any person who would be probably working on a prototype would not begin from a blank canvas, but would start from here. Now, the question is, is this just about making things look pretty or is there something more to a tool like Midjourney? Because look at this auto rickshaw very carefully. Do you find something strange about it? And raise your hands. Yeah? There are, stands. there are stands at the bottom, of course. Raise your hands, raise your hands. Yeah? How do you say that? Because there is no driver's seat. Absolutely. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah? The color? I mean, the color is kind of, it's, uh, it's a fusion of the Bombay taxi thing. I think that is still relevant. But there's one more thing very special about it. Anybody can spot that? Yeah? The what? The doors. No, I think it can be without doors. Not a big deal. Yeah? The what? I mean, yeah, looks futuristic for sure. Design is good. Yeah? Exactly. And if you look closely on the very top, the roof resembles a solar panel. So three things. One, there's no driver. Two, there's a stand at the bottom and the handles are hanging on the ceiling. It's like this. And the roof resembles a solar panel. Now my question is, I gave a very simple prompt. I just asked AI to create a simple prototype of an e-rickshaw. But because Midjourney has scanned so many images, because it is way more smarter, its ability to predict the future is way higher. So it automatically filled in the gaps, saying that if there were an e-rickshaw in the next 10 to 15 years, it's probably going to be self-driven, probably powered by solar, probably convertible into a flying automobile. So AI can actually help us take a look into the future because it has scanned a lot more data than us and it can actually do pattern recognition on a very, very strong level. 
Before you move ahead, I want to tell you about our latest learning website, howtoprom.in, where you can get free AI resources, roadmaps, and step-by-step -step guides that will teach you everything that you need to know about tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney. In fact, you can also know about my offline masterclasses, AI courses, eBooks, and communities all in one place. Visit howtoprom.in to start learning and upskilling yourself. In fact, it can help you see things that don't even exist. So on the left, that's a school image. I was in my school, this is a pretty old image, I think from 2016. And on the right, I have extended the boundaries using Photoshop AI. So Photoshop also has inbuilt AI features. It comes under the category of generative AI and we'll figure out what that means later on. But see the boundaries. Would you ever know that that arm right there is AI generated? It's absolutely seamless. In fact, anything that you see in black and white is the original image. Everything outside of it was imagined by AI. I can also take it to the next level where I can extend the height as well. Now check this out. Anything which is in the black and white boundary was the real image. Everything outside has been seamlessly placed in. Nobody will ever know where reality ends and where AI starts. So, the major, the most important agenda of today's session is not just about knowing what AI can do. It's also about understanding what AI cannot do. That is equally important because that is where we double down as human beings. Because as a decision maker, as professional, any time a problem comes in front of you, you need to be smart enough to understand who to delegate this for. You get a problem, you should have enough intelligence to decide, is this a problem worth solving for a human? Or should I outsource it to AI? And for that, you need to know how both AI and humans think. And who is stronger at what? So that you don't give a problem which is better for an AI to a human being and vice versa. So, I've hybrid enough, let's start with the first module of today's agenda. Some first principles and reality checks around AI because you would be seeing a lot of nonsense on the internet which will just confuse you. In the next five minutes, I'll quickly cover some cliched stuff because there are some people who have never used ChatGPT, so bear with me. But I just want to make sure that everybody is on the very same page. So at first, when you get the pro plan of ChatGPT, which costs around 1800 bucks, this is how your screen would look like. On the very top, by default, it would choose ChatGPT 3.5, which is the free version available to everybody on the free plan. But if you get the pro plan, in the center, it'll say Chat GPT Plus, and you'll have an option to access the better versions of GPT. At this point, it is GPT-4. At the very bottom of your screen, you will find an input field. You literally just chat with this. And whatever you write, everything depends on the message that you curate here. So the first important word for today is a prompt. Moving forward, when I say that I am prompting Chat GPT, I am prompting Midjourney, it is just a fancy way of me saying that I'm writing a message inside this tool. Moving forward, anytime you go on Google, anytime on YouTube, you need to search chat GPT prompts for marketing, mid-journey prompts for social media. Never write mid-journey tricks, mid-journey re results, or mid-journey hacks. Just write the word prompt because that is where you start. Now enough of theory. Let's assume that you want to study a new marketing concept because a lot of you folks are in the subject of learning itself. And I personally believe that ChatGPT might not have a huge impact in terms of day-to-day -day professional work, but it's a game changer for students who want to learn more effectively. So I went to Google and I found a pretty interesting PDF, which was 30 pages long, on market positioning, one of my favorite subjects. Now, without ChatGPT, obviously the shortest part would be to skim through it, to read the entire PDF. But what I can do is, if I have the pro plan of ChatGPT, I can now also upload PDFs. And we won't get into the entire step-by-step -step guide of how you need to do that. You can obviously search that on YouTube, but just letting you know that you can now upload PDFs. After you upload the PDF, I said, read this PDF and once done, wait for my next command. Then I prompted and I'm typing this message inside right? chat GPT. So I'm saying, I am a product marketer in the SaaS space. This is who I am actually. I'm a product marketer in my day-to-day -day job. Can you give me three top key takeaways from this PDF that would be relevant to me? Why would I say that? Because in a PDF, a lot of information might not be relevant to your space. So I'm making sure that ChatGPT picks what is useful to me. In the end, I say for each point, 
specify how I can apply that tip in my own professional day-to-day -day life as a product marketer for SaaS tools. And in less than 60 seconds, it started giving me a bunch of pointers that were absolutely concrete from the PDF. The only difference is that now they were very, very relevant to my simple use case. In fact, I can say that if I were getting five, six points, I can say, I really like the first point. I want to make a LinkedIn post explaining the same topic, but through a very simple to understand story based in the Indian context. This is pretty important because if you don't specify that you're living in India, you want this for the Indian context, and it'll always give you some US American version of it. At the end, I say, can you come up with a short 500 characters long LinkedIn post that teaches the same lesson via a simple to understand story? And it did that as well. Not that complicated at all. Just took 60 seconds to come up with a very simple story. Now, of course, this is not extremely practical. It's not like I can copy this post, put it on LinkedIn and get thousands of views. It doesn't work like that. The difference is that before ChatGPT, I would start from a blank canvas. But now this gives me a head start. Now, there's a very big misconception in the market about AI. And that is what people are trying to sell. That is the concept that is getting a lot of attention is that you can just outsource all of your work to AI. That AI will come and wipe away human jobs. Nobody will have work to do. Everybody's going to go jobless because that is them selling fear. And a lot of cases, when you sell fear, you can always upsell your course. I sell courses so I know how the tricks work. You create a reel and say that in the next six months, you're going to be jobless. And now the viewers are like, just tell me what I need to buy from you. So don't fall for those tricks. I use those tricks, that's why I'm telling you. Right? The thing is, even I have now stopped using those tricks. Now I've told my design team that, folks, let's not sell fear. Let's sell inspiration. Let's sell motivation because that is a better way. Otherwise, people will just be anxious and not even try to learn what is happening in the market. The thing is that as of August 2023, you cannot blindly trust AI outcomes. And I specify August 2023 because, to be honest, nobody knows what's going to happen. Today, they are pretty weak, but nobody knows what will happen in December. But right now, Whatever you get from a tool like ChatGPT, never blindly trusted. You need to build on top of it. So let's put it down into a simple to understand workflow. You get a problem statement in your day-to-day -day life and this is how things practically work. Subse pehle the human things. It's not AI who's hanging around in the real world, figuring out what problems we need to solve. The human recognizes a gap in the market. The human knows which problem is the most important problem. Then human gives prompts to AI and gives context. That is our responsibility. Because for AI, the world is utopia. All roads are straight. There is no lack of money. There's no lack of resources. Everything is ideal. As human beings, it is our responsibility to understand real world constraints, give context to the AI. Then AI gives a result. And by default, that result is very impractical. You can't use it directly. So then the human builds on top of that result. And once the human builds on top of that result, then human delivers to the final stakeholder. So it begins with a human, it ends with the human, and AI alone is not that powerful unless the human gives it context. As of August 2023, and I keep saying that with an asterisk because we don't know how these things might evolve. There's a very interesting website called pessimistarchive.org. There's this term called technophobia. Have you heard of it? Anytime a big piece of technology comes in, there is a bunch of people who get extremely stressed out about it and they spread phobia about it. This website is a huge repository of newspaper articles for the simplest of technology and inventions in the world. This includes teddy bears, mirrors, radio, TV, everything. And you will be shocked to see that people thought that when teddy bears were introduced in the market, people said that this is the end. When escalators came, they said this is the end. When television came, they said, this is the end. This is where society will end. So the thing is, very few people were alive when these things happened. So it's very difficult for us to see when history is repeating itself. That is why as technologists or as AI enthusiasts, I would recommend you folks to spend some time learning history. Because if you know how history works, if you understand how these patterns repeat, then you can very easily predict what's going to happen next. And you will have maximum leverage. And this entire game is about leverage. Next slide. There's a very interesting philosophy that anytime a big piece of technology comes in, we have three categories of people. 
there are opposers who say that this is extremely mad. Please don't use this technology. With time, opposers perish. The people who make the maximum amount of money are the builders. In OpenAI's case, they probably will make the most amount of money because they are the ones who are building ChatGPT. But there's one more category of people who make a lot of money, and those are the users. Let's get out of AI. Let's take YouTube, because YouTube is an example which is very, very relevant to us. When YouTube was introduced, there were a lot of opposers. Cinema halls, DVD distributors, TV channels. So many people said that if YouTube becomes successful, who will come to us? Who will buy courses? Who will go to the movie halls? With time, evolution doesn't care for the opposers because opposers are in the against of evolution. They are standing opposite to the flow of evolution. So what happens is that evolution doesn't care about the opposers and opposers die. Just like those people who opposed YouTube. The people who build YouTube made the maximum amount of money. But there's one more category of people who made a lot of money. YouTubers. And people who used YouTube to learn. I have learned everything from YouTube. Anything important that I know in life, I've learned it from YouTube. So the thing is that when I say that, folks, you need to understand prompt engineering, people think that maybe they should stop their day-to-day -day jobs and become a prompt engineer. No, folks. That is not what I'm trying to say. This is just like Googling. You live your daily life as it is, but you just understand how this thing works. I saw this image a few days ago. It said, humans are hooked while machines are learning. Unfortunately, this is pretty true. Very sad, but yeah. It's actually very, very sad because I showed this to my mom and I was actually on my phone when I said, Mom, I've sent you something on WhatsApp. And I'm not even looking at it. I'm like, just check this out on WhatsApp because WhatsApp has got me hooked on my phone. I can barely see outside my phone. But this is a wake-up call for all of us. Because I'm not saying that you have to be completely away from your phones, but at least don't let these guys rule everything. We also need to learn and not stay hooked at all times. Another very important mindset shift is that tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney, they might get outdated. But the subject of prompting well, the subject of prompt engineering is here to stay. Because if you're a ChatGPT expert, you're running the wrong race. Because very soon, even that tool is going to be replaced by a new tool. But the first principles, they will always stay the same. Now, before I give you a bunch of prompts, I want you to understand that your day-to-day -day work is actually split into two categories. Every category of profession, it doesn't matter what you're in. And once you understand this one simple mindset shift, you will be able to plan your next career moves very easily and prioritize where you spend your time on. It is split into two buckets, execution and ideation. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say you're in marketing and you need to come up with some captions and hashtags and you need to upload one carousel every day. This is pure execution. You know why? Because there's a recipe to finding hashtags. There's a basic recipe to write a caption. There's a 100% accurate recipe to upload a carousel on Instagram. It's all a part of a prescription, right? You can prescribe what this person needs to do, create a checklist. And folks, if you can prescribe something, if you can build a checklist of something, eventually AI will automate it. So you need to ask yourself that, am I spending too much time learning execution? Because if you are, you're running the wrong race. The second category, the second bucket of your work comes under ideation. Now, what is ideation? Is there a prescription for coming up with a good idea? There can be a prescription for a process of brainstorming and then eventually you can have an idea out of a brainstorming session. But is there a very, very valid real prescription for coming up with good solutions? No. Nobody knows where we get good ideas from. It just comes through our own human interactions, through problem solving, through testing. Very, very soon, the cost of execution, the value of execution will go down and only ideation will be rewarded across sectors. If you say that I'm very good at Excel, that means you're an executor. You're going to be automated. But if you say that I'm very, very good at prioritizing which problem to solve, I'm very good at problem solving in general, I'm very good at understanding gaps in the market, these come under ideation. So if you have a skill which is very difficult to prescribe, you're in the right race. Otherwise, you're actually in a very, very wrong sector. 
One very important shift is that you're not outsourcing your task to AI, you're making AI do time-consuming tasks, just as I showed you in the PDF example. Right, I'm not reading the PDF, but I'm using it to quickly save my time. Now, whatever results that I show you moving forward are from ChatGPT+, because there are limited features in the free plan. But I personally feel that it's completely worth it, and if you want to share it with somebody else, you can do that as well. You remember this guy? Doraemon? Now, Doraemon was cutting-edge AI. Right, and Nobita was the world's first prompt engineer. <laughs> because he had such a powerful piece of tech in his house, yet he could never ask for the right things. The guy could never move on from Shizuka. <laughs> Completely wasted the entire potential of that AI. I have been on the opposite side of the TV screen thinking that, dude, if I had Doraemon, I would have been the next Elon Musk. But the funny part is that right now we are manufacturing Nobitas at scale. And if you don't understand how to use ChatGPT, you're just a modern version of Nobita. In fact, I'm about to show you a lot of prompts. Before the prompts, I just want to show you this quote that I don't fear artificial intelligence, I fear natural stupidity. The thing is, anytime I share these prompts and these booklets with people, they're like, oh, my life is sorted. I would never have to walk again, I'll become a millionaire, this and that, I'll do this, I'll do freelance, all of these nonsense. Folks, please don't be naturally stupid. Have some brains when I show you how these things work, because the world is not utopia, you have to be smart about how these tools really work. So first use case, let's talk about upskilling. Because as I said, I'm not asking AI to do my work, I'm actually using AI to become a better human being. That is a very, very practical use case, because the major, the most heavy impact of AI is going to come on learning and education. So, for example, let's just say that I want some guidance around a B2B marketing space, right? So I will open my chat GPT and prompt, act as a highly experienced B2B marketer who specializes in bootstrap, edtech apps and startups based out of India. I'm just creating a fictional case where I might be interning at an edtech startup. Then I'm essentially giving guidelines on how I will interact with this AI. So I will say, you need to become my coach and guide me throughout my college life. Every day, once I come and say doubt class, you need to ask me what I'm working on. Once I answer, you need to ask me any relevant questions that give you more clarity. And keep asking me till you have enough context. This is very, very important because anytime people ask something from AI, they don't give AI the freedom of asking more questions to get more context. So the thing is, ChatGPT feels that I can only ask once and then it hallucinates and gives you shitty answers. You need to give AI that freedom to ask more questions. It's a conversation because it's not a human being. It doesn't come naturally to chat GPT. In the second half of the prompt, I see that once I answer all questions, you need to give me three things. Feedback, next steps, and one free resource that I can refer to for learning. And then I also mentioned that I only have 30 minutes per doubt class. This is very, very important because if you don't specify how much time you have in a day, it will assume you have hours. And then at the very end, I am explicitly defining my outcome. That by the end of these next six months, I should become very strong at marketing at tech products. Keep your answers concise, easy to read and to the point. And it said, absolutely makes complete sense. Now, the way this works is very interesting because now I can come back to this chat again and again and we'll pick this concept in detail. This is called building a chat GPT agent. You can essentially revisit your conversations. Anytime I come back to this conversation, all I need to do is type doubt class. And when I say doubt class, like, great, what are you currently working on? And I can put in any basic idea, anything, like a single sentence. I would say, I am figuring out why most edtech platforms struggle to scale from their niche to more students. Plus, why don't they focus more on offline classes? It's a valid doubt, they all start with digital and now an academy is slightly trying the offline game altogether. But if I'm curious, I can ask the same thing. But then it started asking me more questions for individual topics. And we won't go into the details, but you would have gotten the gist of it. That once I start answering these questions, it will actually start brainstorming with me and help me fill in the gaps as it did with the mid-journey prompt, where I said that I just need an e-rickshaw. But AI told me that it's probably going to be driverless. But the question is, why did this prompt work so well? And if you want to generate the same quality results in your own chat GPT conversations, how do you make the most of it? Turns out there's a four-step checklist. 
and I'm sharing this checklist today, but I'm pretty sure that after six months, there's going to be an AI to automate this as well. You're probably going to have a chat GPT plugin, which is very, very cool that just shapes your prompts on its own. But let's just make sure that we are done with the first principles. On step number one, you need to assign a role. If I want B2B advice, I want a B2B specialist giving me advice. I don't just directly go and ask questions. On step number two, I set my context and define the task where I said, this is what you need to help me with. Anytime I come and say doubt class, you need to ask me relevant questions. On step number three, we are setting constraints that I only have this much amount of time. I only have this much of money. I only have these many people in my team. Otherwise, it will always assume that you have millions of people under you, you have millions of dollars to spend. At the very end on step number four, we have the expectation. You need to make sure that you're setting the right expectation and if you're writing content, you can always say that, write this LinkedIn post in a conversational tone. Avoid marketing buzzwords because by default, ChatGPT uses very, very typical marketing lingo which doesn't work. So just add this phrase, avoid marketing buzzwords. The quality of your results will be really, really high. In fact, I have created a free ebook which has a list of prompts, so we won't waste time going through different use cases. But if you scan this QR code, you will have a huge ebook with multiple prompts that you can use from uh, for multiple industries. And I'll share this, uh, you guys don't even have to click, I'll share the presentation with the team. You guys remember this scene from Harry Potter? From How Blood Prince, where he writes into this book called Hi, my name is Harry Potter. Turns out now it'll say, Hello, Harry Potter, my name is Chad GPT. And I keep sharing these references again and again because for a very long time, all of these things were only seen in movies. We would look at these movies and say, dude, I wish this existed. Folks, this is out of the movie screens. It's just in a different shape and form, but this is happening for real. So let's quickly revise what we did in module number one before we shift to two. First, we understood how AI will change the way we work. It's not about outsourcing, but it is about delivering higher quality of work, getting a head start rather than starting from a blank canvas. Then we understood that how history is just repeating itself. This is just a new piece of tech coming in and very soon new pieces of technology will come in. And you know, it's very selfish of us to think that this entire planet is about the human race. Folks were just a step in the evolution. Even dinosaurs thought that the universe is for them. A meteor came and wiped all of them. So when people say that, oh, what if AI rules us? What if we die? Probably. In 250, 300 years, maybe that is the plan of the evolution, but nobody can control that because that is in evolution's hand. What we need to make sure is that we make the most of it. For whatever little time that we are on this planet, we make the maximum amount of money, we make the maximum amount of leverage, stay healthy, spend time with your family, and then let evolution do whatever it is. At the very end, I gave you some basics of prompting inside ChatGPT. So let's start with module number two. Let's understand some underrated pro techniques for you know, building chat GPT agents and what are they for and blah, blah, blah. Now, before I move ahead, very important to understand that these models might be weak today. They might hallucinate today. But by December 2023, they will become very, very sharp. In fact, I keep giving the examples of Google Ads. You know, Google Ads came in 2000, but it took at least 10 years, 10 years for businesses to adopt Google Ads on a day-to-day -day basis. Because they said, why would we need Google Ads when we have brochures and pamphlets and newspapers and TV channels? Folks who entered Google Ads in the very beginning had immense leverage. They printed money like anything because they knew how this worked. So of course, when Google Ads came in 2000, was it as strong as it is today? Not at all. But folks who entered at that curve, at the beginning of the curve, are now reaping the benefits. So it's just repeating history again and again. So now let's understand what are chat GPT agents. So before I go into the definition, let's understand the problem statement. Why do we need this concept in the first place? The thing is that when you regularly use chat GPT, on the left side, you will have all your conversations. So this is a list of conversation. Every single thing that you've messaged to chat GPT, it comes in a list. And at one point, the list becomes very heavy, it becomes very populated. And you will eventually forget, right, in which conversation I said what. A huge problem is that, you remember, I said assign a role. Anytime you ask ChatGPT something, you need to create a role. If you want to have marketing articles every week, do you keep assigning that role again and again? It's a waste of time. So the thing is, instead of using new chats, instead of creating new conversations, you revisit your old chats again and again. You revisit that same conversation. 
the more you use that conversation, the better it gets. It understands you more and more. So for example, if I were to create a new conversation and this is a use case where I'm using ChatGPT to, for writing reels. So I, in my first prompt itself, I say that your name is real writer. I'm putting a name for it. And then I've given the instructions and I say that once you understand, say yes. And then on the very left, you see that pen icon next to the delete. In my list section, if I click on that pen icon, I can rename this conversation. So I've just named this as real writer so that when I see the index, it is easy for me to identify. I have created multiple agents like this for real writing, for article writing, for prompting my mid journey, which we will cover in segment two. And I revisit these conversations again and again. It's just a concept that you can Google once you're home because I don't want to waste time going into the technical how to's, but this is something that is very, very helpful. A lot of people are using this. In fact, I saw this very interesting meme on Twitter saying, if you're not working multiple remote jobs, you're leaving money on the table with this guy with 20 desktops in front of him. Extremely stressful. God bless his friends. But the point is that this is a signal. What is the signal? The signal is that very soon, two things will happen. Case number one, you will deliver the same quality of work in lesser amount of time. Case number two, you deliver high quality work to more number of people in the same amount of time. So step number one, you keep doing whatever it is that you're doing, use AI and have more free time to yourself. You use that free time for your health, your family, whatever it is. Or if you're young, you want to hustle, then you can serve more clients, more people, solve more problems in the same X amount of time. Now, GPT can see things that you would usually miss, and I see very few people talking about this. Can you figure out what my prompt is? You can raise your hands if you can figure out what it means. Yeah? Oh, yes. Can you give me some advice on upskilling myself? So the thing is, I went to ChatGPT and said that, can you jumble these words up? And the fun fact is that even though the spellings are terribly wrong, it could still understand what I'm saying. So this is no longer about good spellings. It's actually just about knowing the constraints. If you put up the constraints, even in terrible English, it will still figure out what it means. So yeah, I think GPT-5 is going to come in pretty soon. Uh, I just showed you GPT-4 and people are saying GPT-5 is 100 times stronger, 100 times stronger than what you're seeing right now. In fact, they've also launched the same for mobile apps. Unfortunately, it is only available on the iOS. I see a lot of people downloading the fake version of ChatGPT for iOS. Please make sure that it is published by OpenAI. If that application is not by OpenAI, it's probably some other person scamming you. So if you download any app, please make sure it is from OpenAI. And just like phones have apps, right? Even ChatGPT has plugins. So by default, when you buy your phone, it's just for calling and messaging. You download apps, you get more features. Similarly, by default, ChatGPT reads text. But with plugins, it can read images, PDFs, links, a lot of stuff. So it's basically adding superpowers to your own chat GPT. Now to enable plugins, once you have the pro plan, you need to click on the bottom left corner of your screen and click on settings. Once you click on settings, there's this option called beta features. So these are some features that they're rolling out just for paid users. You need to make sure that they're all enabled and I'll take them through Custom instructions we'll just cover in a minute. Right now, we're on the second point, plugins. In the end of the session, I'll show you code interpreter as well. But you need to make sure all of them are enabled. Once you enable them, on the very top of your screen, when you click on GPT-4, you will see these three options. You'll have default, you'll have code interpreter, we'll cover this. But if I click on plugins, it will show me a marketplace for plugin store. This is where you can download free plugins. You don't have to pay for them. So the fun part is that there's one of these plugins called Walkscript. If I enable Walkscript, I can paste in any YouTube video, any PDF link, and it will watch the entire video for me and give me a summary. I can ask questions that, can you tell me what all is mentioned in this three hour long podcast? So it's not just limited to reading text. It can read any kind of media if you explore plugins. Now, I also mentioned Code Interpreter, right? This is very, very new. Let's quickly skim through as to what this is for, because this again, severely, severely impacts the finance industry and the data science industry, like how people interpret data from sheets. So anytime you have any doubts, just ask ChatGPT. When they launched this feature, I asked ChatGPT only. What all can Code Interpreter do for me? You don't need any guide for this. And it said that I can do these many things, but of course, not that practical. 
So I went to my YouTube studio. This is like a dashboard for all YouTubers where you can see numbers of your views, your likes, whatever it is. And you can export all of your data in a CSV sheet. I exported all of that data and I uploaded it into the code interpreter. It read all of the data. And this is where the fun begins. I said, what are the different ways you can generate graphs on this data sheet that I give you? It gave me a list of six, seven different analysis and prompts. And I was like, this is pretty cool. Let's explore more. I said, can you generate a graph for performance by video category? Which is a pretty basic statement, right? Can you create a graph out of the CSV that I have? It created four graphs in less than 10 to 15 seconds. Pretty straightforward. And this would work for any amount of data. Then I said, after analyzing all your previous results, can you give me three data-backed recommendations to hit my goal of 250K subscribers in three months? So now I've given the AI a specific target. After giving data, this data feeding data is actually a part of the context, right? You never ask anything before you give context. I say for every recommendation, call out the data behind the decision because I just don't want blanket statements. Tell me how did you reach this outcome? So it started giving me a lot of pointers and if you notice carefully, right next to the advice, you have this thing called data backing, where it is pointing out to the specific Excel sheet evidence that allows me to understand that, yes, this tip is actually for real. You can also inform ChatGPT about some specific settings beforehand. So this is like a very quick shortcut. They have just launched this feature. I thought I'll cover it again. So it's called custom instructions. I'll tell you the problem statement. If I am in marketing, I don't want ChatGPT to give me really long paragraphs or complicated words. So you can just tell ChatGPT that, dude, anytime I ask you something, keep it simple. You can tell ChatGPT, I am living in Delhi, I am in India. You don't have to say it again and again in every single prompt. So these are some defaults. You can educate your ChatGPT about your own personal life. To activate this, you again click on the bottom left corner, you'll find this thing called custom instructions. When you click on that, the first input field says, what would you like ChatGPT to know about you? So you can tell, where do you work? Who are you? What is it that you do? The second input field asks you about the output. You can see that keep your answers formal, keep your answers casual, whatever it is. So this is something which is a huge time saver if you're a power user of ChatGPT. Very few people are using this carefully. But then a very common question that I get is that, Ansh, why do we spend? Can you give us some free alternatives to achieve the same outcome? So the first one is obviously Google Bard. It's still in the experimental stage, but it's still pretty useful in some ways. I mean, I'll highlight some very cool features. The top feature is that you can instantly export all of your Bard results into Google Docs. So because Google has an end-to-end -end thing, they have sort of collected all of these tools in one single place. There's one more tool called Perplexity. This is again for free. And the biggest advantage of Perplexity is that it gives you the source of the information. So you can click on the source and figure out if this is real or not. There's also heypy.com, another very, very simple and free tool. And this talks to you. So it's not just like a basic text, but it actually talks to you like a friend. And I'm showing these examples so that you know you can always use these same prompts for free on other platforms. In fact, Apple is also building a competitor to ChatGPT. And we know that when Apple builds something, they completely kill it. So very soon you will have a better version probably for ChatGPT, which has been designed by Apple. So the game has just been starting. In fact, Meta has just released Llama 2. The name is pretty complicated, but it's just a competitor to ChatGPT. So when I say open AI, people think that it's open source, that it's free. No, it's not for free. But these guys, they're playing a very long-term game that are actually making it free for research and commercial use. So yeah, with that, we end module number two. We understood the basics of ChatGPT. I quickly covered the basics of code interpreter, custom instructions, and some free alternatives to ChatGPT that you can use without paying a penny. We're almost at the end of segment number one. Before we leave, let's start with module number three as to what do you even do after this? Because I've intimidated you so much, I've thrown so much data at you. What do you do when you go back home with this knowledge? See, I'm going to share you a list of AI directories. They are nothing but a list of different, different AI tools. We had limited time, so I could only talk about ChatGPT, but there are industry-specific, use case-specific AI tools. The first one is futurepedia.io. You go to this website and select the domain in which you're working. So you can select copywriting, customer support, audio editing, whatever it is. And this website will tell you about all the free tools and all the paid tools coming in that sector. 
Then we have AI Valley dot AI. Again, a competitor to Futurepedia does the same thing, gives you better results. There's also Super Tools dot Rundown. Again, all directories are the same, but it's just that when you have more options to choose from, there's very little chance that you will miss something valuable. So you can always refer these sites, maybe you know once a month or so. There's also there's an AI for that dot com. This has very, very specific niche-based applications, not like every applications, but very, very specific mundane tasks. Now, if you're in the SaaS industry, if you're an entrepreneur building a web app, there's a website called sasproms.com, which has a use case list of how you can use ChatGPT to grow your SaaS business. So these are very specific to entrepreneurs or into tech. Now, what you need to do is you need to go through all of your notes and pick one resource a day. Don't go through all of them in one single shot. Pick one thing. Then figure out what AI tools are being introduced in your specific domain. Because you could be an educator, you could be in a finance, you could be in customer support, whatever it is. You need to figure out what domain are you in and then figure out the right AI tools. And afterwards, understand that this skill is going to be as important as Googling. By December, every single job description will have a bullet point on the top saying, well-versed in prompting XYZ tool. So for example, if you're in finance, it's probably going to say, well-versed in prompting Microsoft Excel. Because it's going to be as important as just English. And if you're scared about not keeping through, just create an agent on ChatGPT and make it your coach. Just tell ChatGPT that, dude, I'm trying to learn AI. These are the number of resources. Create a timetable for me and keep me accountable. And you can no longer say, folks, that I couldn't figure out what to do because this excuse has now been thrown into the dustbin. For a very long time, people used to message me on Instagram saying, Anj, we go to YouTube, there are so many videos. What do we watch? Now, even that excuse is out. Because chat GPT helps you find the signal within the noise. I know there's so much of content on the internet, but this will help you find the truth and direct you as to what you need to do. So yeah, in fact, to make life easier, we have also launched a free platform for prompting resources. We just released it today itself. And it's called howtoprompt.in. It's a free website. Once you go to this website, you'll have a list of videos from my channel categorized in order, AI directories, prompts, ebooks, everything in one place. So yes, I hope that this made sense that it's not replacing humans, but it's actually helping humans deliver better. There's a huge difference between that. And if any of you are building a company, just five minutes, I just want to give a list of use cases and I will share this PDF with your team. We don't have to go through them one by one. But what I've done is I've created a list for each and every department of your company. So for example, your HR department can use ChatGPT for these many use cases. I've made a list for your marketing, which involves your copywriting, ideas, WhatsApp messages. For IT and programming, you can use it for basic debugging, basic Python. If you're creating a landing page, you can get ideas from ChatGPT that we're making a website, tell us what we should include in it. For your product team, they can create PRDs, do competitor analysis, you know, put in the URL of your competitor, ask ChatGPT, tell me what are they doing right? Tell me what are they doing wrong? And guide me on my topic. For research and analysis, I think this is pretty straightforward. Go through PDFs, go through news, go through large CSV sheets. For sales, it's extremely useful because you can use it for cold emails, cold calling scripts. In fact, this is one tool called poise.ai or Wingman. The fun fact is that this tool comes into your Google Meet calls, records how you're talking, and once your Google Meet call has ended, it gives you feedback that Ansh, maybe you were very overconfident in those first 10 minutes. Here's a video that can help you improve your communication skills. It's a pretty cool tool. So let's start with module number one, basics of mid-journey and all the possibilities. Now, I'm not going to show you how mid-journey is installed. For that, I've created a very detailed YouTube video. If you scan this QR code, you will be redirected to my channel, where I share you how do you download this tool called Discord. That is for free. Once you get Discord, you need to create an account on Midjourney. Midjourney is unfortunately paid. It costs around 1300 rupees per month. Once you do that, you can put it on your Discord and use it on your computers and your phones as well. But I recommend it to use it on your computer. Once you download your Discord and install your Midjourney inside of it, this is how the screen looks like. From a first impression, you'll be like, this is extremely scary, intimidating. Trust me, in the next 15 minutes, you'll know everything about it. You need to know just a few buttons and you will be sorted. Just like ChatGPT, inside Midjourney, what I have to do is I have to prompt an image. So this is something that I would type in and then in less than 70, 80 seconds, it would give me four images in one go. And then I can pick one of those four images. Now, a very important thing to understand is that people think Midjourney is like Photoshop. That I would give in a prompt 
I will get a lot of images and then I can edit it according to my own needs. Absolutely false. This is not like Photoshop. It is just like Google Images, but better. You go to Google Images either for just drag and drop in images or you take inspiration, but you can't edit anything that you get from Google Images, right? It's not an editable file. So please make sure that all the examples that I'm showing you right here, whether it's for social media posters, YouTube, decks, graphics, icons, you can just use Midjourney right now for inspiration, for ideas, for brainstorming, and not actually real, real design work. It can't replace designers. So please be very careful about that. So even, even when it comes to fashion, clothing, visual inspiration, those AI avatars, all of it is possible using Midjourney. If you can see something, you can generate it with Midjourney AI. So the thing is that just like ChatGPT, weak prompts will give you a weak result. So in the second half of this session, I will tell you how do you give a strong prompt inside Midjourney so that you can create some really, really good images. So as I told you, right, it's not just about making things look pretty, it is also helping us take a look into the future and fill in gaps in our thought, even when we're thinking about solutions. Now we understood that four part checklist for a chat GPT prompt. Let me show you how does a mid journey prompt look like. There's a specific structure to it. Very, very straightforward, very, very simple. So when you install Discord, before you describe your image, there's one thing that you need to type. It's just syntax. It's just rule. And that is slash imagine. You can't use mid journey until unless you type slash imagine. Once you type slash imagine, you need to write the scene description. What is it that you're looking for? your entire scene that this is the city, these are the people, this is what you want to visualize. Then you have the style, because you have the same scene, maybe as an illustration, maybe as a comic, maybe as a painting. So this is a visual style. The last component is called a parameter. So the thing is, by default, Midjourney gives you a one is to one image, but you can always ask Midjourney to create images in a specific aspect ratio, make it slightly more chaotic, make more uh, ultra realistic images, maybe render fast. So these are some technical stuff that you can fine tune. All of that comes under parameters. So basically there are three components to a mid journey prompt. I saw this meme a few weeks back. It said to replace graphic designers, clients will need to accurately describe what they want, which is next to impossible. So when people say that, oh, graphic designers will lose their jobs and clients only will run mid journey. Are you serious? The second half will tell you how complicated even mid journey is. It is not easy even for a designer to use this tool. So forget about people who are not from design. So let's cover some basic parameters, right? Because description you can figure out. For styles, I'll, I'll give you a lot of resources, but parameters is something which is slightly technical. So let's say I want to make some virtual backgrounds, maybe for my Zoom calls, maybe for a YouTube video, whatever it is. And they need to look realistic, right? So I will type slash imagine a sci-fi background. This is a weak prompt. So when I give a weak prompt, this is the result that I would get. By default, it's going to be a one is to one image. And you can see how terrible these images look. It's like a proper 2008 graphic design aesthetic. These are not usable at all. So if you pick any of these, you can obviously see that they look very, very fake. But now if I write the same prompt with some few extra additional words saying, make it minimal, aesthetic, sunlit, glass and metal architecture, refined, detailed, ultra realistic. Like I can describe as many details as I want about every single aspect. I will get something that looks like this. By default, it's one is to one, but I create YouTube videos, right? So I need a wide image. So I will probably use the AR component. We've discussed this briefly, but let's quickly cover. At the end of your prompt, you need to write dash dash AR without any spaces. And then afterwards, you need to write 16 is to nine. 16 is your width. Nine is your height. I think this is pretty straightforward, but yeah, I just thought I'll clear it out. So when I run the same prompt saying AR 16 is to nine, this time I will get a wide image. And then you can pick any one of these and probably, you know, use this for whatever. Like this can be used for interior designers, architectural drawings, even for backgrounds. The use cases are infinite. And just like this one single parameter, Mid Journey has created a very detailed documentation. If you go on Google and type Mid Journey parameter list, you can learn all of this for free from Midjourney themselves. I teach this regularly to folks that if you want to learn how ChatGPT works, learn it from OpenAI's documentation. You want to learn Midjourney? Don't get a course. Just go to Midjourney's documentation. You should only buy a course for two reasons. Number one, you're running out of time. 
you're running out of time and you want to finish this in the next one week so you can't waste time googling and going through documentation then you buy the course second you need to learn something which is way more advanced and you can't find it on the documentation but because all of you are beginners you don't need to pay anybody even a single penny just refer the documentations and you'll be good to go this is also pretty funny one everyone says that ai will replace designer's job ai accepting the job these are some mid journey renders and this is how it creates handshakes so it's a pretty funny meme because it's not as smart as you think it still needs a lot of human input so a lot of people ask me can we use this for print we have brochures posters a lot of requirement for the graphic design can we print this no folks you can't it's not that practical but you can always use it for inspiration so with that we end module number 1 where we understood what is mid journey we understood the basic structure of a mid journey prompt and we did some basics of upscaling creating variations and the aspect ratio parameter now let's cover some pro tips for mid journey because this is where your mind is just going to get blown away this is where we actually do cutting edge prompting inside mid journey so the first tip that i always give is to absolutely learn a list of rendering engines now what do i mean by that this is a list that i have tried and tested so the thing is when you do 3d modeling or uh, when you're creating 3d renders there are specific softwares and rendering engines and you can always do a try and error on all of these i'll show you what difference they make on the left side i have prompted dog running on the surface of mars but on the right side if i just add 16k in pixar it looks like it's a still from a pixar movie same scene but just by specifying a rendering engine i have created an outcome which is very very unique if anybody of you are in illustrations I can write a giant octopus playing drums on the beach and just at 16k vector graphics it would create a vector me vector file. Now the thing is that of course this is a jpeg right so to edit this in adobe illustrator you need the actual vector copy. For that there's a website called vectorizer.ai. Mid journey jpeg onto this website it will create an editable ai file for you. But the thing is it's going to have a lot of complicated grouping. So you have to ungroup it and then group it again. There's some manual work, but again, huge time saver. Like imagine if you had to come up with this from scratch. You will waste so many hours just to get to this point. There's this guy who tweeted, "So designer is now typing a prompt and hitting generate." And the guy replied, "Is heating a frozen pizza considered cooking?" And it's very similar, folks, because we have frozen food available for sure when there's an emergency. but that doesn't mean that people just stopped cooking or stopped going to a restaurant and stopped making food all together now this is where we take two pieces of technology and combine them together for something incredible because you must be wondering dude how will i come up with such good prompts you can train your chat gpt to come up with mid journey prompts who needs to come up with their own prompts because in the end it's just a text input right so what i did is I created a prompt that taught chat GPT about mid journey. I created an agent and I started feeding inspiration to my chat GPT. And once I did that, I had to just give one single sentence. It created the mid journey prompt for me. I copied pasted and got these images. So I would create a very simple idea to my chat GPT and then it would add on to it as I said, it is filling gaps. Right? So it is helping me visualize and create better concepts that I can then feed into mid journey. In fact, I went to Canon and Nikon's website. I downloaded a bunch of ebooks on photography and I fed all of those to my ChatGPT agent. I basically made my ChatGPT agent into a professional photographer. Then I taught my ChatGPT how mid journey works. Once I did that, these are the kind of images mid journey started to create. Now the fun thing is that how do I get to this point? Because this is super realistic now, like this is crazy. Why? because this is how the prompt look like so it's not just the scene description but it is also specifying the camera model the lens the shutter speed the iso every single thing now how did chat gpt know this because it has read every single book that i could find about canon and nikon cameras so when i gave it a scene description it decided what camera would work what lens would work what configuration would work which is mind blowing this is again a mid journey render but how did i get to this point because the prompt behind this image looks like this now can a human being ever come up with this 
it is impractical. Even if it is practical, a huge waste of time. And I am a very lazy person. Like I'm extremely lazy. That's why I'm always on the lookout for shortcuts and systems so that I can build a system, create a shortcut and deliver high quality of work in the least amount of time. And that is what all of you need to do. Folks, nobody cares about how hard you work. It is literally about your output. If you're working super hard without any outputs, nobody will care. So please make sure that you're using these tips and tricks to deliver high quality of work. In fact, a friend of mine, Ganesh, he's coming tomorrow, right? He has a YouTube channel called Think School. Please make sure you're there for his talk. So Ganesh told me that I need a reel which is on Indian farmers. Can mid-journey create that as well? And these are mid-journey renders. Incredible stuff. Absolutely fascinating. I have been using them for my own Instagram reel covers as well. If you go to my Instagram, you'll find all of these. In fact, there are a lot of Indian artists who are doing some very inspiring works because there are some creators like Varun Peru who are creating these sneakers, Madhubani sneakers, all created from Midjourney, right? He, he does this very, very cool photo shoots, all generated inside Midjourney. So folks, this time, we're actually doing pretty well and I'm very happy about it. And just to share some resources, see, it all comes down to your vocabulary. If you can write well, if you can think well, and if you have a good vocabulary, Midjourney is sorted for you. So there's this website called midlibrary.io which has created a list of genres, art movements, visuals. You can regularly go to websites like this and figure out the art style names. Because you can visually see something but you might not know what to call it. So this helps you fill in that gap. In fact, there's this website called Mid Journey Showcase where other Mid Journey creators show off their work. So you can figure out what they're doing because you can click on any image and figure out what was the prompt behind it. In fact, you can also use specific cameras inside Midjourney, right? You don't have to go through the entire Nikon ebook route because I'll show you what I did. This is a normal prompt. Cinematic still of a woman sipping coffee in a static cap and these are the four images it gave me. These are the four cameras that I regularly use for my Midjourney prompts. And there are specific benefits for these, right? So I have never used these cameras. But now I know for what use case, which camera works. So for example, for the same prompt, this is without a camera. If I run the same prompt with the Canon EOS R7, this is the result that I would get. It is way more subtler. The aperture is very high, very soft images. Sometimes when I want something which is very colorful, very high uh, saturation, I always use the red Monstro 8K. Because in this one, the colors are very smooth and they pop out. Like it always creates a very Wes Anderson sort of a thing. In fact, you can also have specific DOP guidelines. So I use these three very regularly. For example, if I were to use rule of thirds, so rule of thirds is this uh, principle where you keep one thing in the focus and you have this room shrinking in. So when I say rule of thirds, mid-journey knows that the subject needs to have maximum importance. And folks, when I use rule of thirds, this is the render that mid-journey gave me. Would you ever know that this person doesn't exist? Does the job well, like, Midjourney really, really focused on this guy because I've used the rule of thirds. Incredible stuff, folks. So yeah, I would just recommend you folks to spend some time, right? I've, I've shown you so many things. I have been making my own reel cover. So there's this thing called face swapping. We, we won't go into the depths of it, but basically yeah, all of my reel covers are now like this. I would just create a mid-journey image, swap my face. So I don't have to click pictures, right? I can just do this again and again and it just keeps giving me ideas. So folks, your ability to talk to AI is going to be as important as your ability to talk to human beings. It's going to happen pretty, pretty soon. So yes, this is my YouTube channel, folks. If you're interested in knowing deep stuff about both of these tools, you can always go to my YouTube channel. This is the QR code. In fact, I also regularly upload content on Instagram uh, where we share hacks, tips and resources. And yes, that is all for the module three. With that, we end our live AI masterclass at IAM Bangalore. <laughs> That's my email ID. If you have any doubts, you can always reach out to me. Uh, we've been doing sessions, consulting all over the globe. And yeah, uh, show of hands, who has any questions? We'll do them outside. I just want to get an idea. Okay, one or two. Makes sense. I, it's, I know you need some time to digest <laughs> what all is happening. But yeah, I think now we can disperse. And if you have anything to say, otherwise we'll meet outside. There's this place where we can take the stickers, click pictures. You can ask me questions. I'm here all evening, folks.
Thank you. You will find all the relevant resources and the link to download the PDF in description. If you're here for the first time, make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Let me know in the comment section if there's something specific you want me to cover in the next video. We make content on design, AI and technology to help you upskill for free. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Ansh Mehra signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.